All right, today we're going to do Newton's third law. So before we get into that, let's just do a quick recap of what we've already talked about. We have Newton's first law, which was discussing the objects in motion like to stay at motion, objects at rest like to stay at rest, that concept of inertia. And again, I'll remind you, F net equals zero for objects at rest, or F net equals zero for objects moving at a constant velocity. You gotta know that. Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, so that's our F net equals MA. And then today, by the end of today, I'll be able to explain Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, you may have heard that before. So I want you to just think about this for a minute. Normally I would demonstrate this in front of the class, but when I sit at my desk in a chair that has rollers on it, and if I push on the desk, what happens? Well, most of you would say you go rolling backwards, and in this case, you'd be right. I would go rolling backwards. So I pushed on the desk, yet I go rolling backwards. So does the desk push back on me? And the answer is, of course, yes. Okay, so when we look at Newton's third law of motion, for every action force, there is a simultaneous reaction force that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Okay, so uh, for example, if you were to kick a wall with a 100 Newton force, the wall is going to hit your foot back with 100 Newtons. That's why it hurts so much. So there's one little extra piece I want to put in here, though. So for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, but they don't act on the same object. That's a really important idea. So if you can imagine, I'm going to go push on the wall. So if I push on the wall and the wall is pushing back on me, why don't the forces cancel each other out? Well, here's me pushing on the wall, but the wall pushes back on me. And I should try and make those probably a little bit shorter here. Let's make them there. Okay, so now I have two forces. They're equal in magnitude. They're opposite in direction, but they're not acting on the same object. Okay, so that's the big reason why the forces just don't cancel out. Okay, so internal versus external forces. When we discuss situations in physics, we sometimes have to talk about systems or reference frames. We have to narrow down what we're actually going to view because sometimes we look at parts, sometimes we look at the whole thing. So, for example, if I was sitting inside a car and I pushed on the dashboard, okay, so if we viewed that reference frame as being the interior of the car, I could see the dashboard and myself or you as a different object and those objects can affect each other. So we would call those external forces. Your push on the dashboard will move you and your seat potentially backwards. Uh, it might even compress part of the dashboard. But if we stepped back a little bit and we viewed the system as the entire car, you pushing on the dashboard will not make it move any differently. That's the car. Okay, so if you were inside your car and you were just pushing on the dashboard, it's not going to start moving. Okay, so we consider those forces internal forces. And a great example of this really illustrates the misunderstandings that some people have is the idea of putting a fan in the back of a sailboat. So if you put a fan in the back of the sailboat, a lot of people think, hey, more wind will go in the sail, we should go faster. Okay, and I have a little video here that will debunk that idea. Okay, this is one of my favorite demonstrations of all time. Uh, this is demonstrating internal versus external forces. So I have a little fan here. You can see that this rolly cart doesn't move. Uh, if I turn the fan on, okay, the fan is going, nothing's happening. If I remove this plate, the fan drives out of the picture. Okay, so now what's happening is, from a force standpoint, you have forces of the air and the blades working on each other, and there's a driving force there. Okay, but when the air particles strike the bl or the sail here, it's counterbalancing it, so nothing happens. The cart stays put. If you want to see it one more time, not moving, moving. Okay, so we've watched our little sailboat. Um, you might be a little bit surprised how that worked out. Now, if the sailboat or the sail and the fan were farther apart, we might get a completely different 
uh, result but because the fan and the sail were very close together it's like they're inside an object and that's why those forces could be viewed as internal forces okay so looking at forces there's some success criteria we're going to use for solving problems we've got enough knowledge now that we can start to solve some meteor problems so the first thing we're going to do is we're always going to draw a free body diagram and this might be the most important part of getting these questions correct so please spend some time on developing your skills in this area identifying forces where they are uh, because the free body diagram is what leads to our F net equation and I'll show you how this works uh, once you have a proper F net equation then all of the math part actually breaks down really quickly and easily okay so I'll show you how this works so here's an example of two skaters uh, skater one is the person in the pink shirt and I believe they're 50 kilograms and skater two is in the blue shirt they are 70 kilograms Okay, so now if you want, you can pause this and just try and do it on your own, or just stay with me. So the first one here, state the action and reaction forces. Uh, I always just, basically you're switching the nouns in, in the sentence. So if the girl in pink pushes on the boy to the right, then the boy pushes back on the girl in the pink to the left. Okay, something along that line. So it doesn't have to be complicated. It's just an easy sentence and you normally just flip the nouns, the directions and those types of things and you've got the answer. Uh, draw a free body diagram of each skater. So I'm just going to use a simple box here. I'll make sure I can scroll down a little bit further here and show the entire picture. Get up there. Okay, so now free body diagram. Uh, and you'll get to a point, especially as you do more of these problems, I'm writing in or I have the vertical forces, the normal force and the gravitational force, but because these skaters aren't jumping in the air, they're just standing on ice and everything is going to be in a horizontal direction, these two forces here I already know are going to be in balance. So I could do an F net statement for the vertical, but I'm going to save some time and not bother doing that. And in the grade 11 course you should see almost all of our questions are in one direction. Okay, there's one example we'll see in the next lesson and once you see it you'll be like aha I understand why that works the way it does okay so I'm not worried about any verticals in this question so the only unbalanced force is this horizontal 70 newtons and you'll notice there's a positive and a negative uh, direction is given up here to the right is positive or to the east is positive west is negative or left is negative okay so the only unbalanced force they have is this applied force so now here's the F net statement for the horizontal based on the diagram. So we have over here, we have our free body diagram. We've got an F net statement based on our diagram. So F net equals F A. Okay. The next line, we substitute values in so we can replace the F A with se negative 70 newtons. We can replace F net with mass times acceleration. We put the 50 kilograms into for skater one and we come up with an acceleration of negative 1.4 meters per second squared which makes sense because we would expect the girl in the pink shirt to go to the left and that was the negative direction okay we repeat the same process with uh, the person the skater in the blue shirt skater two and you'll notice though they have a slightly different acceleration and this should make sense because skater two has more mass Okay, because they're both experiencing the same force, and we know that that's the, the equation we're looking at, because they're both experiencing the same force, and they have different masses, the acceleration is going to have to change respectively. Okay, so a larger mass of skater 2 results in a smaller acceleration for skater 2. Okay, so here's a couple to try. So hit pause and try. The first number or question number one is basically just sentences I'm not gonna write them out but I'll say them once we've tried them and then we'll try number two together okay so let's give this a whirl given the action force describe the reaction force so you push forward on a book with 5.2 newtons well we would say something like the book pushes backwards on you with 5.2 newtons. Again, it doesn't have to be anything 
uh, amazing. You can't even read my writing there. Uh, just change some of those nouns and the directions and you'll have the statement. So a boat exerts a force of 450 newtons west on the water. The water exerts a force of 450 newtons east on the boat. Okay, just swapping some of those terms. A hockey player hits the boards with a force of 180 newtons toward the boards. Flip the things. The boards hit the hockey player with 180 newtons away from the boards. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Let's get rid of my messy writing there because that's pretty bothersome to me. Bye bye. Okay, and now let's look at the next one. Noble and Mayhem. Get a different color here, purple. Are wearing inline skates. Noble has a mass of 62 kilograms and pushes on Mayhem, whose mass is 54 kilograms. Mayhem accelerates at 1.2 meters per second squared to the left. Okay, so I've got Mayhem and he's going to go in this direction. Assume that no friction acts on either person. So determine the force that, ex that Nobel exerts on Mayhem. Okay, so there's a force here. So if Nobel Let's, uh, let's move our motion, this guy here, we're just going to move him so we don't mistake him for a force. Okay, so we'll use red for a force. So if Nobel pushes on Mayhem to the left, okay, then that is our applied force. Okay, so when I go to s solve this problem, uh, I've defined positive to the right. Choice is yours. You could have defined it to the left. It doesn't matter. So I write my F net statement. And the only force that's acting here is negative FA. Okay? And again, so there's my free body diagram. I have my cho chosen directions. Uh, I've already done part number two where I've, write, I've written an F net equation. Part number three, substitute in F equals MA into the equation. So I know this is mass times acceleration equals negative FA. Okay? Better give myself a little bit more room here. Come on, and let's get rid of our purple symbol there. Okay, so now let's get back here. The mass of Mayhem is 54. We were told the acceleration is 1.2 to the left. So we can put a little negative in there. And now we can solve for negative FA. Okay, so 54 times 1.2 and we get 64.8 newtons. So that is the applied force that Nobel pushed on Mayhem. Okay, so determine the force that, let's uh, erase the answer here, there's the force. So 60, we got 64.8, book has 65. We have a negative, or an FA pointing to the left. I should actually write that in, that's left. Okay, so this is left. Okay, determine Nobel's acceleration. Okay, now we could do the exact same problem, uh, only this time there's a force acting on Nobel. We actually happen to know what it is. We know that it's 64.8 or 65, but I'm going to start the same process. I'm going to write my F, na F net statement. I'm going to say it's equal to FA. I'm going to swap out the F net with mass times acceleration still equal to FA, and then I'm going to fill in some numbers. So the mass of Nobel is 62. We don't know the acceleration, and we know that the applied force is 64.8. Uh, if I divide both sides, I get 64.8 divided by 62, and I get 1.05 meters per second squared to the right. Let's have a look, and 1.05, 1, but pretty much the same answer, going to the right. Okay, so on section 3.4, you can try 1, 4, 5, 6, 7 if you like. Uh, the canon one's kind of fun to think about, that's number 4, and thanks for tuning in.